The reason I don't genuflect in church is because of my high school basketball coach. Let me explain. My main sport was soccer, but in high school I also played varsity basketball. Now, we were a really tiny school, but in my senior year, we made it all the way to quarterfinals of state. We got that far in part because we had a couple of really good ball players, and because our coach pushed us really, really, really hard to be in good shape. Now, part of the way I translated his exhortations was telling me I needed to ignore pain. So for years later, playing soccer, I often played injured. Now, after three knee surgeries, a hip replacement, a shoulder rebuild, compression fractures in my spine, and more orthopedic fun, I really can't genuflect. It's not that I don't want to. I mean, I do it in my heart. It's just that it's, it's so painful to even try. So back to my senior year in high school and playing basketball. My claim to fame was that year I kept this much of the bench very warm. <laughs> that's where I sat. Now, truth be told, for big games, I'm a little embarrassed to say this, sometimes I kind of preferred it there. I was often too nervous to be much good. I remember shooting free throws and my arms felt like two by fours with hinges. I was so stiff. Sometimes I, sometimes I was glad I wasn't in the game because I didn't want to be the reason we lost, right? Today's gospel offers a fascinating look at the benefits of sitting on the bench and the risks of getting into the game. Let's look at three. First, the parents of the blind man are classic examples of sitting on the bench. When pressed by the Pharisees about their son, they chose not to get in the game. Ask him, they said, washing their hands. He's old enough to speak for himself. Now, they stayed on the bench because they realized they could incur the wrath of the religious leaders of the day who were very powerful people. So rather than risk that, they remain on the bench. They weren't in the game. Two, the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees start off as key players, but they move themselves more and more to the sidelines. They go from the potential for faith in this Jesus to outright rejection of him. For if they admit that this Jesus person was something special, they'd have to rethink the way they, they did their religion, really. And quite honestly, they had a religious system that served them quite well thank you very much. It was a way of religion that was, well, for many, if not most of these leaders, had become mostly about earning, about ego, about control. And this Jesus person was inviting them to, oh, what a change their thinking, really, and their living. Instead, they stiffen in their opposition they keep themselves in the game politically, I suppose. But in the realm of faith, they're now on the sidelines, just yelling at the coaches and the refs and the other players, complaining that they're frauds and even dangerous, never taking the risks to be out on the court themselves. And three, 
the blind man himself. Now, he had spent his entire life on the bench, sidelined because of his inability to see. Yet today, we see him start to move into a starting role. It's a messy process. It involves mud and spit. It also is a painful process, including some confusion and also ridicule. Yet the more the Pharisees press him, the more he steps up his game and gets involved in the flow of action. The way he speaks of Jesus shows his deepening involvement and commitment. He first speaks of Jesus, he speaks of him as the man called Jesus, then calls him a prophet, then a man from God, and finally, Lord. What he had found in this Jesus was someone worth his life, worth following. He can no longer sit on the sidelines. He is in the game now. Today, you and I face the same choices these characters faced. Will we let ourselves be blind to what is ours to do? Or will we let ourselves truly see this man, Jesus, and what he invites and asks of us? Will we sit on the bench or will we get in the game? It is certainly easier to just be on the sidelines, right? There's not much risk of failure. It doesn't require much effort. We're less likely to get injured. And from the benches, from the sideline, you can yell at the rest. You can yell at the players. You can yell at the coaches. Among religious people to this day, that, that yelling, it's a very popular pastime. Or there is this other temptation for all of us. It's to choose to sit on the bench and while not attacking others, to also not step in when it is ours to do so. And sometimes it is ours to be in the game, right? You know, someone's getting picked on or made fun of. People are being treated unjustly, but we do nothing. It's, it, it's messy when you get involved, so we don't. Heck, if I do, people might turn on me. You know what? You're right. They might. If you step up in any way, there are always people ready to criticize you ridicule you, misjudge your motives. I mean, think of Jesus. He, Jesus, the best person ever. He experienced that relentlessly. Yet he chose to stay in the game because he knew it mattered deeply how he played his position in spite of the ridicule, in spite of the unfairness of it all, in spite of the injuries he would receive, he stayed in the game. And that is why it so encourages my faith when I see so many of you step out onto the court. You do so probably at least somewhat aware that it's a little bit uncomfortable or there might be some suffering involved, some ridicule. I mean, one, I, I look at the people in the OCIA process, choosing to get baptized or received into the church on Holy Saturday night. Well, what a, what a, what a jump into the game, right? Or maybe... You sign up to be a participant in things like our day of reflection this weekend or serve in some leadership role on a committee or in an organization. 
I see some of you do work to create a more just and loving world. Even though you get attacked, sometimes we're even talking about it. I see family members who choose to get in, engaged and involved in the, the lives of their children and spouses and beyond that to others who need an ear and people who in so many, many ways get into the messy, painful, crucially important game of life and faith. Thanks for the difference you make. You make a difference also for me. Yeah, as a, as a soccer player, man, I was happy to be in the game, excited. As a high school basketball player, because I was afraid of making mistakes, being on the bench didn't always seem to me to be such a bad thing. But when it comes to an authentic life, one cannot be a true follower of our Jesus from the sidelines. Life and faith are not a spectator sport. Are you in the game or not?